very funny story. Made funnier by musical accompaniment from Paul and Storm. This is an entirely true story. It originally appeared in my book, Dancing Barefoot. Then it appeared in my book, Just a Geek. Now it appears for you on the stage of Woodstock 3.0. It is entitled, William Fucking Shatner. <laughs> Waiting for Paul is my Will Wheaton cover band. <laughs> Waiting for Paul is my Wings cover band. Cover band off then. <laughs> Which is my Hootie and the Blowfish cover band. <laughs> oh, man. He just always sneaks in behind the defense and bam, it's in the back of the net. Which is my George Michael cover band. <laughs> It became something of a joke, and the crew began to give me some good-natured ribbing about my reluctance. 
Next Generation was immensely popular at the time, and I was still riding high on the success of Stand By Me. They couldn't understand why I was so intimidated by these actors. My face was splashed across the cover of every teen magazine that existed at the time. Well, they were the original Star Trek actors, and I was a nerd. Do the math, guys. <laughs> One afternoon, while I was sitting around outside stage nine, talking with Mandy, my costumer, they opened the huge stage door across the way, and I could see right into the set of Star Trek V. It was a large area, sort of like a cargo bay, filled with extras and equipment. It was quite different from our set, but it was unmistakably the Enterprise. Standing in the middle of it all was William Shatner. <laughs> He held a script open, sort of like it was a holy text. The way he was gesturing with his hands, I could tell that he was setting up a shot and discussing it with the crew. I waited for that familiar rush of nerves, but it never came. Seeing him as a director and not as Captain Kirk, I know it's a director, we can all laugh at that. <laughs> Seeing him as a director and not as Captain Kirk put me at ease. I knew that this was my moment. If I didn't walk over and introduce myself right then, it would never happen. I was wearing a gray acting ensign spacesuit, <laughs> unzipped with the sleeves tied around my waist. I hate that fucking costume so much, I wanted to buy it in the auction so I could set it on fire. <laughs> the costume was really uncomfortable, and I'd take the top half off whenever I got the chance. Because that was a jumpsuit, I would tie the sleeves around my waist, and I would wear a lightweight fleece jacket zipped up to cover the embarrassing muscle suit the producers made me wear underneath it. Uh, we all had to wear those muscle suits, okay? All of us, even Michael Dorn. But I think I was the most traumatized by it. I think Frakes has actually had some kind of magnets in the shoulders that would pull him toward the camera when he walked through the door. I'm a really small person uh, with no muscles at all. It's just, <laughs> I'm a nerd. <laughs> and having to wear all of that thick padding did little to improve my fragile teenage self-esteem. I turned to Mandy, and I took off my fleece. I asked her to zip up my spacesuit and fasten the collar in the back. Oh, Mandy, okay, Mandy zipped up my face. If I was going to go and meet William Shatner, I was going to do it looking starkly regulation. She made sure that my costume looked good enough for camera, straightened my communicator, and wished me good luck. I got a high five from one of the Teamsters as I confidently walked across the street and into the cargo bay of Enterprise 1701A. It took about eight steps for my confidence to evaporate. <laughs> Surrounded by extras in Starfleet uniforms, standing next to a shuttlecraft, William Shatner, William Shatner, <laughs> The director was immediately transformed into Captain Kirk, the intergalactic legend. I was transformed from Will Wheaton, fellow actor and film industry professional, into Will Wheaton, the drooling fanboy and Star Trek geek. I looked around. Well, I guess I blended in well, because nobody had noticed me. I turned to make my escape, and I bumped into a still photographer who had worked on Next Generation in our first season. Hey, Will, what are you doing here? He asked. 
I swallowed and looked at the stage door. Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
hundred percent of the shots you don't take. <laughs> well, I would never let a kid come onto my bridge. <laughs> he, turned, he turned around and walked away. Captain James Tiberius Kirk of the Enterprise 1701 and 1701A, the only person in Starfleet to ever defeat the Kobayashi Maru. <laughs> the man behind the Corva Mike. The man who took the Enterprise to Genesis Planet to return Spock Katra. The man who I had admired since I was eight years old, before I even knew how cool it was that he fucked every green chick in the universe. <laughs> He's immediately transformed into William fucking Shatner. <laughs> by the still photographer who had made the introduction, but he had vanished as well. I walked back to my own stage with my head down, avoiding eye contact the entire way. When I got to the entrance, I found Mandy and I asked her to unzip my costume so I could put my fleece back on. She unzipped the back, she said, did you get to meet William Shatner? Uh-huh. What's wrong? She handed me my fleece jacket, concerned in her eyes. Well, um, I didn't want to say it out loud. Because if I said it out loud, then it would be real. Um, when, um, when I met him, he was a dick to me. <laughs> oh, Mandy, turns out that Bill Shatner's a dickhead. <laughs> Her eyes widened and she gasped, what? and I recounted the now infamous introduction. <laughs> what an ass clown, she said. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I nodded my head and she gave me a hug. I took a deep breath, shrugged my shoulders, and walked back to my trailer where I closed the door, sat down, and cried. Aww. I'd spent weeks getting up the courage to meet him, and in less than five minutes he had insulted and humiliated me. He had reduced me from peer to peon. I wore my stupid costume that I hated, thinking it would matter to him, and he made fun of it. Fifteen minutes later, an assistant director knocked on my door and told me that they were ready for me on the set. I stood up, wiped my face off, and told him that I'd need to make a quick stop at the makeup trailer on my way. He radioed this information to the first aid and told me to hurry. I walked to the makeup trailer, taking great pains to look at the ground, the walls, the sky, Anything that would keep my head turned away from the Star Trek V stage. I sat in the chair and my makeup artist, Janet, began to touch me up. I heard about what Shatner did to you, she said. <laughs> Fuck that guy, he's a jerk. <laughs> I sighed. I didn't want him to be a jerk. I, I guess so. I said as non committally as I could. She put down her makeup sponge and turned the chair away from the mirror so I was facing her. She looked me in the eye and said, Don't let him upset you, Will. He's not worth it. Okay, I lied. I knew I was going to be upset about this for a long time, write about it in two books, and then perform it on stage. <laughs> because I'm from the fucking future, bitches! <laughs> I walked into the stage and took my seat on the bridge of the Enterprise next to Brent Spiner. I heard about Shatner. <laughs> what, was this on the news? <laughs> yeah, I said. You know he wears a toupee, right? <laughs> I giggled. No, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, he's balder than old Baldy up there. <laughs> I guess I have to update this now and call him Sir Old Baldy. 
He tossed a cold thumb over his shoulder at Patrick. I giggled some more as the stored up adrenaline coursed through my veins. <laughs> wow, he's really bald. <laughs> yep, Brent put his hands up on his console. The first day he said, this will be picture. We all focused. Picture is up, very quietly, he shouted. Roll camera. 25 Apple, take what, the sound mixer said. Sound has speed. The camera assistant clapped the slate. Action, said the director. Patrick entered from his ready room and walked to the captain's chair. Mr. Crushaw, take us out of the wall and lay out tools for a mob system. Four sticks. Aye, sir. My fingers danced across the con. Four slated, sir. Making so, Mr. Crushaw. on Star Trek. Those days on the bridge took forever. <laughs> Cut, great, new deal, the director said. Wrong set, we're moving to the observation lounge. Actors, you have ten minutes. On my way back to my trailer, the DGA trainee stopped me. Uh, Gene Roddenberry would like to call his office well. <laughs> oh my god. What? <laughs> I changed direction and walked to the stage phone. My heart began to beat hard again. Had Gene heard? <laughs> William fucking Shatner had known Gene for over 20 years. If Gene knew that I'd upset William fucking Shatner, maybe Gene would be upset with me too. <laughs> I passed the craft service table set up behind the star field that hung next to the 10 forward set. Michael Dorn and Jonathan Frakes were pouring cups of coffee. To hell with him, W! <laughs> to this day, I love it when Frakes calls me W. <laughs> Double with who? Michael Dorn said. She had to pick a shit all over the teen idol. <laughs> Beneath his latex cling on forehead, Michael rolled his eyes. You want me to kick his ass, Will? <laughs> no, no. Thank you, though. <laughs> um, I think I got this. I've got your back, man. <laughs> I know. I dialed Gene's office and told his secretary that I was returning Gene's call. He's expecting you, just a second. There were two clicks of Gene's soft, friendly voices in my ear. Hi, Will, how are you? Uh, I'm okay. How are you? <laughs> oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. No, I understand you had some words with Bill Shatner today. <laughs> Like, I could see individual droplets of coffee dropping down into Frakes' little paper cup. <laughs> One starfield mirror slowly glinting back and forth, <laughs> dust motes suspended in the middle of it as I held my breath and waited to answer.
The next day when I got to work, there was an envelope on my dressing room table. It was addressed to Master Will Eaton. It originated in the office of William Shatner. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I dropped my backpack and tore it open. Inside there was a single 3x8 note card. The Paramount Pictures logo was stamped into the top in blue, and William Shatner was stamped into the bottom in gold. There was a message typed on the card. It said, Dear Will, you are a fine young actor, and I would be honored to have you on my bridge any day. Good morning, Gene. I spoke with Bill Shatner yesterday. 